Let's talk about the Chancellor's recent announcement around the mortgage charter, helping people on mortgages. What's in it? How does it work? Is it just a load of spin? Let's talk about it. Okay, so I've just watched Jeremy Hunt's speech um, on the mortgage charter, which is basically the government pulling together all the lenders and trying to work out a way where, uh, essentially, it's not you know it's gonna it's not gonna be a, a doomsday scenario where lenders are just repossessing everybody and and it's a wild wild west. They're trying to rein in the lenders and make sure they've got some sort of controls and systems and some sort of agreements uh, throughout the lending community to try to see if they can help. Um, borrowers cope better with the shock now first thing this should have been looked at long time ago okay these sort of steps should have been thought through and had meetings about a long time ago at the end of the day we knew this day was coming at least six seven months ago right so why is it taking a meeting emergency meeting on a Friday to make this happen we knew this was coming we knew interest rates are going to go high we knew this was going to problem right and that brings me to my end point and I will talk about these things later on right so what does that actually mean so as expected they've agreed with the lenders that they can uh, if people are struggling they can either tweak with the term of the mortgage and um, they can turn it into an interest only if you want um, the, so the repayment strategy they can stretch the term say they wanted to do it from a 10 years 15 years to a 20 years obviously that's to do with your age as well it's not just you know not everybody can go and do it but you know there are some criteria around that but essentially you can play around with the term you can turn it into an interest only mortgage so there's a little bit of tweak within that okay which we knew this was going to be happen and it's not going to affect your credit profile which is very important so that's the first thing the second thing is which is a bit naughty so basically they've agreed that you can lock your term of you can lock your mortgage with that lender for six months in advance so that's basically the lenders securing their own business they're securing their own pipelines they're basically this is anti-competition and i'll tell you why the second point is you can lock it in say you want to lock yourself in at five percent and if that lender has a better deal within six months with that same lender, you can switch it. Well, that's what happens at the moment in most lenders anyway. There's nothing different there. What it's doing is what they should have said is lock in with your lender. Say your lender's with Santander. And if you get a mortgage with Barclays two months from now on and they offer a better rate, you can swap. But that's not what they're saying. They're saying lock in with Santander, lock in wherever your lender is. And then you've got six months to lock in at a better rate with that lender, should they choose. So basically, that's helping the lenders secure the business okay that's basically giving the lenders what they want they want people to stay with them they don't want competition that's actually disincentivizing competition right so again the big banks have spun it and another point is um oh in regards to affordability oh there's no further affordability needed for uh, if there's going to be a switch or a product transfer you just pop well that's the case for many lenders at the moment okay if you stay with them they don't want an affordability now if you go by a broker the broker still has to get your bank statements your pay slips and your fact find and all the bits and pieces but the fundamental affordability calculation the lenders actually don't do okay so again they've been spun it's unfortunate now whether the government the chancellor whoever's in a meeting whoever's advising him knows about this or whether they've just been spun. They've just been spun that line, okay? So some of the most important and fundamental steps are already taking place, okay? Are already paying. Granted, on the interest-only stuff, um, on, on changing the term stuff, that is new because otherwise if you had to if you had a normal remortgage um and you were going from an interest you were going for a repayment to interest only one a lot of lenders will not do it two there are additional steps uh, interest only is generally for high net worth individuals you've got to have an income you've got to have x amount of equity in your property so that is that is granted but that's not necessarily doing a good thing we've we've spent the last i don't know 15 i'll tell you something about interest only guys when i do when we have to do our PI insurance, when we have to do our insurance, we have to state every single client, bearing in mind we've been going for 15 years, every single client we've done an interest only mortgage for because they see that as a much higher risk. So for the last how many years, when I've had to renew my insurance, 
I have had to fill in questionnaires and for questionnaires and questionnaires about interest only, the downsides of interest only, the risk factors of interest only, the clients are, and all of a sudden in one swoop, they're going, well, the lenders will just do interest only. So it's not necessarily the best thing, okay? Um, I understand why they're doing it. I understand why people need it. I understand there's a certain amount of people that need it, but it's not great. It's not, it's not a good thing. Uh, and, and people need to be aware of that. Putting another 10 years on your mortgage is not a good thing. But some people have to do with it. And some people, you know, haven't got that money. I understand that. But the affordability stuff and staying with it, that staying with your existing lender, that is honestly, oh, what can I say? What can I say? Right? That's your spin. The next bit is actually quite good. It's in regards to 12 months grace period, in regards to the first late payment you've had, if there is going to be repossession proceedings against you, the fundamental thing is if you are in signs of showing signs of distress, not making cope, not coping, have got this deadline maybe coming up and not, you're not quite sure what to do, you need to speak to your existing lender first. Okay, speak to them. Okay, then maybe once you know where they stand, you then take that information and you go and seek an independent mortgage broker and you speak to them, see if there's any other options out there. Because there are many people that are in different spots. Okay, I've got people that have spoken to me recently. They're on an interest only mortgage and they're old now and they cannot get a mortgage. So their term is running out. So they've got a different need. Because it's not just about, they can't extend another two years. The lender will probably give them another two years, right? So different people have got different needs, okay? So it's, it's vital, first of all, you contact the lender, see what they can do for you, tally that up with an independent mortgage broker and take it from there. But yeah, bit of spin coming up, guys. Let me know what you guys think. I'll catch you on the next one. Take it all the best. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.